So here it is, hobbing a gear and pinion from scratch. Here's some stock for the gear, and we'll get some smaller stock for the pinion. Then we'll make some gear blanks in our lathe for the gear and the pinion. And we'll put uh, some keyways in there with a brooch. We'll hob the gears that look like this. And if we do it all just right, in the end, we'll have a nice set of gears that fit on their center distance properly that we can measure. And they spin beautifully like this. So in order to make our gear blanks, we're going to use a manual lathe. This is an Akuma LS lathe. So we've got our, our stock in our six jaw. And we want to do as many operations as possible on, on uh, to make the blank in, in uh, one go. So the first thing we do is, you know, make sure we have all the right tooling, but we will face the front of the gear blank. And then we will drill a hole. Sometimes you drill a hole followed by boring the hole. That, that operation improves the accuracy of that hole. And then we'll turn the OD. We'll chamfer the front and plunge back chamfer the backside and then cut off. Now, in our particular lathe for these types of smaller gears, we can get the front face, the OD and the ID very concentric and the front face and the back face very parallel, but we usually can't get as good a finish on our back face. And uh, that's just part of it. And, and so sometimes we leave more stock on the back uh, for maybe a further grinding operation. But uh, this is uh, just some footage of making that blank. And in this case, we're just drilling a hole. Nice sharp bit there. Now we'll do a chamfer. And we're going to cut it off. But I think we're going to close the truck. We're going to do the back chamfer first. We're just going to have to plunge this. match. And then we're going to cut it off. So here we are broaching the gear blank we just made. We've got uh, uh, do more brooch set here for our gear brooch and uh, bushing and the machine we're using is a do more press so kind of neat to have that set to match and there it is no big deal now there's other ways to join your gear to the shaft not all gears need to be joined to that shaft some just spin but many gears have a hub with an attachment etc Here's the first step in our hobbing process. We want to get our index change gears put in the right order. So this is E, and this gear here is F. So our change gears are A, B, C, and D. Now their ratio, gear ratio that is, needs to match an equation for this machine. So the machine has a constant, and in this case, let's see, this machine constant is eight, right there. So we're gonna make a small pinion, 14 tooth pinion, with a machine constant eight, 
and that gives us uh, a ratio that we need to match with our change gears. So th these are the gears that are in the machine. The ratio is 0.57 with lots of other decimals. The pinion is made just like the gear. This is the smaller one called the pinion and it's mounted on this arbor here. These are just spacers to hold it up. And in our tailstock here, our tailstock here, we'll put a little center to hold this straight. And uh, this is our hob. And we'll, we'll cut the teeth, we'll climb hob the pinion right there. So what's going on here is we are touching off, seeing the little marks and counting them to make sure our change gear setup was correct. And we're setting our tailstock so we can put in the uh, working depth of the tooth that's written on the hob. And, and there it is. It's time lapse, we're climb hobbing the pinion. All the marks are confirmed. And uh, this just takes a few minutes to do in real time. We are spread, sped up here on video. But uh, this is the pinion, start to finish. Now, we're only cutting one pinion here to show the overall process. But this particular machine is made for production. You can put in a much longer arbor and hob five, six, seven, you know, as many gears you can fit on your arbor at a time. When you get done hobbing, you'll notice these scallops on your gear. And they're from the generating motion of the hob generating those teeth, Mul many multiple cuts. Now we're going to go right into hobbing the gear and it has the same exact equations for calculating the change gears as the pinion except we put 28 tooth, uh, a 28 tooth gear on the bottom and calculate a ratio, change the change gears and continue on with the process. So again, a time lapse, hobbing up. Again, we could put more gears on here, but uh, that generating motion of the hob turning and the gear blank turning uh, is what generates the involute shape in the gear. And that's the uh, most important part of the hobbing process is, uh, of many actually, is one, it's uh, very good at indexing all the gear teeth. So it's uh, dividing that circle out very accurately into 28 teeth and two it's generating that involute curve just for that the same hob can be used for any tooth count uh, practically there's a lower limit of 10 or 12 or so depending on the machine but uh, any any tooth count you want with the same hob unlike uh, milling a gear and uh, looks like this one's just about finished and we'll pull it off and check out all those same scallop marks we'll see on this one so this is a two to one gear reduction between these two gears, a 28 tooth gear and a 14 tooth gear. The gears in mesh are set at their center distance and they'll run nicely against each other. Hope you appreciate the content of this video. There's more in the description below and we have uh, many useful other videos as well as calculators on our website go check it out make some gears